Hello everybody, this is Roller with Winter Bros, and in this video demonstration we're going to show you how to create your own circular plane uh, out of primitives to be a primitive for use in your own uh, creations, model creations, or even actually uh, using your scenes and animations if you want to use it that way. Uh, we start by opening up DAS Studio. In this demonstration we're using uh, version 4.8 Pro. Uh, go ahead and do, If you haven't already, I'll go ahead and start a new scene with File New. And we're going to start by going ahead and creating us a, uh, on the create menu here, new primitive. We're going to actually use the cylinder as the uh, basis for our, uh, our uh, new uh, circular uh, plane. Uh, but you can use any settings that you want to. Uh, we use 10 and 10 for in centimeters, but so here we go. Uh, here's the actual cylinder, and uh, we're going to actually be using, uh, go to the tool settings. Uh, on this panel over here, with the actually make sure the cylinder selected. Excuse me. Now, if you don't have the tool settings in this panel, you can find it up here on the uh, tools on the main menu. Uh, we're going to actually be using geometry editor. So if you just click it, it'll pop it up either in a pop-up window or on the tool on the uh, working panel for you. So uh, you normally might think that uh, we would uh, just want to delete. Uh, the bottom half of the cylinder so that we can get our circular plane just by stripping it off and having the top remaining. And that's what we're actually going to do. But what we're going to show you is that if you right click on it and you go to selection mode and mark K, which is a box selection mode, a lot of people might think, well, I'm just, I don't see the top, so I can just do a selection like this and I can get rid of all the sides. However, if we do a little pan around here to the top, you'll see the bottom and the top have both been selected in that manner. So we want to keep the top, so what we want to do is just get rid of the, the bottom and the sides. So what we're going to do here is we're going to change back to selection mode to drag. And then we're going to go click this little uh, world view here, and we're just going to go straight to the top. And we're going to click and just start selecting just in a circular pattern so that we just get the top. And if we rotate around, you see that the, it hasn't selected the bottom or the sides. So now we're going to right click on this cylinder and we're going to tell it to uh, turn, go to visibility, hide unselected polygons in this case. And you see now we got our just our remaining plane there. It's in a circular shape. Right click again on it again, and we're going to do the geometry editing. Go ahead and delete the hidden polygons, which will remove all those unseen parts. And you can see now we just have a circular plane remaining. A couple more things we need to do though. We will go back to the uh, front view, and we will tip it down a little bit. Now that you, if you haven't noticed, the uh, plane is setting way up off the floor. So one of the first things we want to do for we can create a usable object is we want to go up here to Edit Object. Oops, excuse me. And uh, I keep losing it there. And move to Floor, and it'll drop the plane down to the floor. Well, now we've got uh, a good exportable uh, object that we can export here. So the next step is going to be to make sure we rename it over here in the scene tab to something that we want to call this uh, primitive shape as once we create it at the end. And we're going to call ours uh, circular plane. Rename it there. Move our mouse cursor and it's renamed. And now we have it selected. We're going to export it as a way for an object file. So we're going to go file, export. Uh, we already have a folder here we're going to be creating our work in. So we will, uh, we're going to call our circular plane. And we will save it there as a wavefront object file. Uh, the sizing option you choose for your export, uh, it doesn't matter which one you pick, but when we re import it, you want to use the same one. For us, we're going to go ahead and use the DAS Studio sizing. And then we'll click accept. And now we've exported this model. We're going to go ahead and do a new scene uh, because now we're going to show you how to UV map it in the free UV mapper classic. And if you don't have UV Mapper Classic, you can use any uh, UV Mapping utility you like. Uh, since this is a free utility, it's been around for a long time, a lot of people use it. And it's perfect for this demonstration, we thought we'd use it. So once we open up UV Mapper Classic, we're going to go File, Load, Bottle. And we're going to go ahead and find our object that we just exported. There's a circular plane, and we'll bring it back in. It's going to give some details here, uh, which usually won't be important to most folks just trying to create a UV map. But they could be if you're uh, in deep into modeling. We'll click OK. And you can see that it's created our shape over there. We're going to go ahead and go over here to uh, 
edit and we're going to tell it to create us a new UV map circular cap because that's the kind of the shape we have uh, you can choose the size of your map we want to create ours so that if we ever want to add a lot of detail so we're going to use 2048 by the map size we're going to click OK and you can see there it's created a it's it's UV mapped out our uh, circular plane looks a little oblong in this but if you actually if you uh, it's just because it stretched it to the screen width there so you can see if as you size resize UV map or classic it uh, it'll do it to whatever so once you've got that you want to go ahead and just resave your model file save model um, I would just leave the default so that you know what you're doing so we'll go ahead and click OK you can create a the new model with a UV on it we're just going to override our old one so we'll go ahead and click save to write over it and say yes and then also we want to go ahead and go to file uh, we want to save a, our UV map texture map so file uh, save your texture map here on the menu uh, we keep in the same size that we did the, the uh, actual UV mapping on and there it comes up into the same folder already and we're going to it's going to be a BM bitmap file so there it is circular plane bitmap so that if we do want to create something to add on to it we can we're down with UV mapper classic and now we're going to return back to that studio now you might be wondering why we UV mapped the object file and that's so that if you want to apply textures to it in the future uh, the tiling uh, horizontal and vertical tiling will work properly so now we're going to bring our uh, object back in with file import and of course we're going to go find the object file there it is we click open. Of course, we want to use the same sizing that we use for the export. In this case, we used Add Studio, so we're going to click Accept, and that's what we're going to use. And there it is in the Scene tab. We'll go ahead and focus on it, and there it is. Okay, and we're going to show you really quick uh, how the applied texture looks on this uh, in a render. So we're going to go ahead and uh, minimize the uh, that panel and open this back over here. And we're going to go over here, and we are going to add a surface now to our circular plane. Uh, we'll go ahead and browse and we're going to go back into our documents folder. There's our folder. And we'd already created this uh, floral uh, texture we want to apply to the circular plane. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change our render mode here really quick. Render settings to 3 light. And we're going to see how that looks when it uh, renders out for us in uh, DAS Studio. Okay, you can see how it's uh, it's nice and centered on the circle, the plane. Uh, we're going to close that really quick though, and we're going to demonstrate what the UV mapping difference is going to be. Back on the Services tab here, if we scroll down, there's a horizontal and vertical, vertical tiling, tiles, here you go. So let's say we want the flower to appear three times across the uh, object and we want to appear that the uh, that texture file to appear three times vertically uh, then we'll run another quick render here and you can see there it is uh, on the uh, actual uh, circular plane now you gotta remember that if you if we didn't uh, have the UV mapping you wouldn't be able to do this horizontal and vertical tiling with any textures you apply to your circular plane so that's why we created the UV map you don't have to uh, it's just an option, but we recommend that you do so that when you do go to use it, you're not stuck in a project and say, oh, I wish I had UV mapped it. Uh, you can go any further and save this as a DAS Studio prop if you like. Uh, in an object format, though, you can use it in many 3D applications. We hope that you learned something from this video and find some use for the circular map. Uh, excuse me, the circular plane. Have a great day.